the work here spans a, a lot of years. Like, for example, these prints, these seven prints, I've just finished. Right. They're called, they're from a suite of prints called A Retrospective in a Box. Right. And they survey my career. So this it's is... It's nice to do Sean's what on Valise. I'm liking your, your take on that. Yes, very good, yes. Um, so this is, of course, based on my early Through the Flower work, sure. which it corresponds in Rifle Maker to the same period as the Porcelains or the Mary yes. Queen of Scots yes. image. Then you saw the uh, flight hood with yes. the butterfly, yes, right? Absolutely. The butterfly had appeared in my work on and off, and when I went through this kind of minimal period in response to the 60s macho LA art environment and suppressed my imagery, the butterfly disappeared and then reappeared. And interestingly enough, the butterfly is a symbol of liberation, and so it reappeared as I was liberating myself from the idea that I couldn't be myself as a woman in my work. This is the only print I've ever made related to the dinner party. Okay. It's based on one of the entryway banners. Yes, I remember that. Yes, and I if, saw the dinner party in the 80s. Yes, when here, you, yes. When it, when it was yeah. At the Hayward, wasn't it? No, no, it was in an alternative <laughs> space. You know, everybody <laughs> thinks they saw it some museum, <laughs> and it's actually in a lot if of only, places, it only, only, right. Yeah. I mean, it did go to some, but not here. Anyway, Donald, who's a wonderful photographer, photographed a piece of Belgian linen right. in order to reproduce mm -hmm. the tapestry mm -hmm. quality, which I love. And that, to get that actually is two runs. That's a, a flat and then the texture. Right. And then this it relates to the birth project. Right. And there are two birth project needleworks in mm -hmm. this show. Okay. This relates to a series I did after the birth project called Power Play. It, what, it, it examined the construct of masculinity. And what happened, interestingly enough, in fact, this is probably something that's happened many t a, a number of times in my career. My work seems to have been ahead of the context. In other words, you know, the dinner party appeared early in terms of women beginning to express themselves openly. The birth project appeared at a time when there were almost no images of birth in Western art. I'm just so, thinking of, um, Mary, the, one, the only one I can think of apart from you is Mary Kelly's... Postpartum, post right, yes, yes, right, which, yes. Yes, yeah, which is about the same... Time, time, yes, but much more abstract. Yes, yes. and also much more there. There it was. Yes, the there, there it was. Yeah. Well, the Birth Project is actually a huge series. There's mm -hmm. 80 works, mm -hmm. 85 works in the Birth Project. Anyway, Power Play um, was not understood because it preceded gender studies and queer theory. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. last summer it was re examined, and a catalog was written by Jonathan Katz, who's the most prominent queer theorist in America. Yep. So that was great. And this image is from the Holocaust Project, which I did with Donald over eight years. And this is a, a really most recent image. It relates to something you'll see downstairs, uh, autobiography of a year. I did an early version of this, but I reinterpreted this again in, I th for my age now. Young, oldest me young. Yes, okay. and actually, <laughs> if you saw the photo in the window, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. called Eve at 70 in the garden. Well, John bloody Copeland did it back in the day. I knew he? John he Copeland. Took, he took his head off. He took his head off, yes, <laughs> right. All right, so then in the early 1970s, I was uh, beginning to wonder if I really wanted to paint because after all, it was possible to deal with this kind of content. This is the first Im image of menstruation in Western art. Amazing, isn't it? 1971. 1971. Actually, it's a hilarious story. I did this print at a litho shop that was set up by the painter Fra Sam Francis, with whom I was friends. And he had a Japanese printer. He introduced me to something called a rainbow roll, which I've used extensively in these prints. Yes. But it means you put more than one color on the roller and blend it. Uh -huh. 
So it was for me, it was like, a free, I thought, oh, that's great. So then we proof the print. I'm standing there with him, and I say, well, what do you think? He's, I'm sure he was totally mortified at doing this image, right? He says, me printer, you artist. <laughs> And this is a uh, menstruation bathroom from Woman House, which was in the early 1970s. That's the famous boxing ring ad that was started as a spoof. I was spoofing the guys' ads in LA. They all did these really macho ads. Peeling back is a very famous image from the Rejection Quintet, in which I, was, I had decided instead of veering away from my imagery and the form language I had built in the first decade, I was going to peel it back and deal with the issues that really interested me about female identity. Right, right, excellent. It's very odd looking at it, actually. It's a kind of strange optical, yeah. very it's, kinetic. That's very it? funny, you know, I, I, because I did a lot of work on color, and people yeah. come up to me and say, you know, that's moving. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I made it move. No, it's a real, <laughs> it's a real kinetic image that's fabulous. Again, you see, I've seen, I've seen these in, um, I've, I've seen this image in reproduction, of course, nothing compared to a country. Well, that's why I'm, so, I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity for people in the UK to, UK to see more work than just the dinner party, right? It's fantastic. Although I was saying, I was saying, on, yeah, but I was saying on the Women's mm -hmm. Hour, you know, I've done, I've done like a lot of really large scale work. And so this is still just it's a glimpse. A this Although is a I taste have to of say, Judy. I was quite amused in a very ironic way about the fact that we're being filmed. Um, don't film me. That's fine, Louisa. Go ahead. Um, I was very amused by by, um, by the fact that in Rifle Maker, you're showing opposite, almost dying opposite of the groupie photographs from the 1970s. Of the what? This um, I thought, I really noticed. Really? They're called the groupies, and it's ba it's Baron Volman's. Bol Photographs of 1970s groupies. That is funny. They featured in the Guardian. If you look on the Guardian online, and the Guardian covers up um, Saturday Magazine a feature on it about a week or two ago, and they're all these 70s chicks who got famous from sleeping with the rock musicians, and, but they're quite empowered in that they made their own rock band as well. But I just thought the two faces, if you're How forgive me for of you know feminism in the early 70s of this kind of completely kind of you know. The, these women who were playing the game to the most ridiculous degree, yeah. and you who was giving a completely alternative yeah. narrative that's, that's across perfect. the street. Next time you're, when you're next oh, you're going back to Wednesday, Monday, tomorrow, right? yes. Or we'll have to go see it tomorrow. Yes, that's yeah. wild, that Louisa. So that's, oh, All God. right, so I also Sorry. did, I did a lot of performance. Right. Um, this was my student, Suzanne Lacey. Ah, fantastic. There she is, yes. So. Um, is, is she not also in the film that's showing in Rifle Maker? Uh, she, no, Woman's I don't film. think so. No, she wasn't in, she didn't participate in Woman House. Woman House, I shouldn't have No, she didn't participate in Woman Sorry, House. Sorry, I thought I thought so. Yeah, but uh, I just think. Uh, Where are these taking place? This actually was, this is a piece about rape. It's called The Blutions. And I had spent weeks recording stories by women who had been raped. And the, we made a, an audio tape, and it was played all through this performance. And this was in the studio of a male artist in Venice. And I mean, there was total silence after the performance. Total silence. Nobody knew, you know, they had never heard stories about rape. You know, and these were part of my fireworks pieces. Stunning. Well, I've done quite a lot of fireworks, and I think there's at some point there's a film of the of the atmospheres, right, Rachel? Yes, yeah. they're looping here on the screen. And these were a series I did um, called Women in Smoke. I, I did fireworks pieces all over Southern California. Yeah, and actually, you know the color drawings in uh, downstairs in Rifle Maker? Yes, 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 yes. Well, the way I worked out the color in those, I would lay out the color in a very similar way. And then it was like that color uh, was allowed to just mix in the air. These are, so these, they've got body paint on? Yes, they have body paint on, yes. Wow, that's fantastic. I do love that. 
very particular kind of colour for that period too. That's it kind of colour. Well, you know, it was interesting. Know, it was interesting about. Oh, you mean the the foot the uh, photo the colour? Yes. Saturation. But it, actually, the colour was pretty much like that. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Although no. somebody was commenting about my show last night at Rifle Maker about the colour, right? And I'm like, yeah. Well, I was in California, in California. and now I'm in New Mexico. I said, if I lived in London, my colour would probably be just like Gwen John. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. But what was interesting about those um, those car shields colours was, was that they were so strong, but they were so not the colour that you would ever see on a car, unless it was a kind of pink pimp mobile. Apart from that, they were these fantastic because they were these very bright, they were very feminised colours. That's true. But really strong colours. You know, it was really interesting. I thought you'd never see that, even with the metallics, the way they were used. But you can see color. I mean, color is one of the hallmarks of my work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I've done a lot it's of work kind on of color. Bright. It's, it's, it's a particular. You've got a very particular. Color yes, I do. Color. Actually, it was interesting. I mean, you'll see it as you walk through the show. You'll see a kind of consistency of color through the whole show, even mm -hmm. though the imagery changes, the subject matter changes, the techniques change, but there's a consistency of color. You're absolutely right. I do approach yeah. color in a particular way. And I did a lot of work on color to uh, how to create emotive states with color. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. All right, so this is one of the birth project works. Okay, this is a particular one. And the way I formatted the birth project was there were 85 of these, what we called exhibition units. That's like the documentation that tells the story of the making of the piece, tells the story of the needleworker, tells something about birth. Because after all, I was bringing needlework out of one context into another. And you know, the art world still doesn't it's know everywhere. a lot it's of... It's interesting, it's everywhere now. I was up in Edinburgh, Kathy Wilkes. Yes, it is everywhere. Their samples. Now, you really pioneered it, you know, yes, but now... Yes, yes it's and everywhere. And then do I know, it's actually... Like the writer curl, really. Yes, I know. And actually, I just got um, a PowerPoint that somebody sent about maternity and motherhood in art. And, of course, they referenced the birth pressure, but it's amazing how many young women artists are working on this subject in needlework. I mean, Kathy, Kathy Wilkes, she wrote go online and show, show, um, show sure. Judy. It's, um, yeah. it's a modern institute in Glasgow. They're little models. Can someone get it up she on She was for the Turner Prize. She's one of, you know, she's a leading oh, young yeah, child yeah. Mm -hmm. But Kathy Wilkes. child mannequins, um, you know, handmade by little samplers taken from the 19th century, original ones on the floor. I mean, it's very interesting. That wouldn't have happened without you. But I mean, she's you know a couple of generations on. Well, like yeah, this. See, out. see this. Amazing. This is this technique. This is original. This is, this is, this this is, the, is the original technique. Yeah. Yeah. It was used for smart for clothes, children's yeah. Yeah. clothes. <laughs> And so, I mean, I was talking about this last night in the dinner party. I discovered that I had this unaccountable ability to look at something like this and imagine it used in this sense for compression, because this is a story it's of those tight pleats. Again. Yes, right. This is actually a piece of fabric 60 inches wide. Right. So this is smocked and embroidered. Yeah, but it's a very different use of the. Yes. It's used expressively. It's channeled in a totally different way. But it is interesting that you get that same, as you say, that kind of compression. Right, well, that's why I chose it. And those tuny pleats as well. Yes. They're very, very different, but that's the sort of, yeah. Yes, it's nice to talk to somebody who has so much art history. Back. All right, Sorry. so, you know, no, I like <laughs> that. I and like that. <laughs> and there's Helen and there's Tracy. I think one of the things they, the show intends to show is the overlap between some of the themes I've used and themes by other women and in many cases, you know, later than me. Yeah. Like Tracy, I saw her show, we saw her show at the Hayward the last, and you know, I liked a lot of her early work, but she seemed completely unaware of the fact that there had been anybody who did any of these things She's prior to her. Oh, is that what it is? She just has a good forgetting mechanism? No, she's very, you know, she went through all college. She's not uneducated, Tracy. I, oh, really? That's interesting. Helen that's interesting. was a really good friend of mine. Really? I, mean, really? This I this love this her student, work. This is student work. Yes, I know, but I, li I, I like to work no, very much. She's one of my best friends. I organized her memorial. I mean, yeah. she died so long. I, I know, terrible. All right, so, of course, um, this is yeah, 2007, and this is 1971. Is she? I don't know. I invited her. <laughs> not, that we, not that we know of. Oh, okay. This is oh, 1971. Right, right, right. 
Have you met her ever? Tracy? No, but I've had a, many email correspondences with her. And I mean, good email correspondences, interesting. Interesting. This is the only like major work in the show in terms of scale, but right. this is called Autobiography of a Year. Which year was this? This is 1993-94, and it chronicles the ups and downs of a year. And interestingly, this, here you see me associating different colors with different emotive states, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking about that. Exactly. And interestingly, when I was working on the Frida Kahlo book, I found a page in her journal in which she did the same thing. She's the only artist I've ever encountered who actually associated colors with emotions. Because the only other one one could think of in a very different way, in a very male way, is of course Kandinsky. Doing right, music or, in colors, right, doing or doing Albers, you know, exactly. right. But for complete, anyway, so. Emo tying it into an emotional, I mean, feelings in art weren't really allowed anyway. Were right, they? absolutely, that's absolutely <laughs> right. They weren't focused on it. Anyway, so this is a narrative. A did long, you just do the pages when you felt like it? I, did you have any kind of system? Or did you yeah, actually, I did the pages. I worked on it on and off cons over the course of the year. And sometimes what I was after was I was after a kind of direct emotional, like from my heart to my, through my hand. And sometimes I'd have to do one a couple of times to get that. I wanted that kind of immediacy, you know, because I have this capacity to do, as you saw, like from the car hoods or the needlework, completely transformed work. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go against that tendency and do just emotive, direct, and uh, uncensored images. Yes. yes, which is quite hard when you're practicing. Yes, practice so absolutely. That's absolutely right. Get tripped up by technique because, yes, I mean, I had. References. And, and also the fact that, you know, I had developed a way of masking feeling, transforming feeling, um, embedding it in forms, and I wanted to go completely so it was against a complete it. complete channeling, a complete channeling straight onto the page. That's right? absolutely right. Like, so for example, I mean, when I did this, right? Just, you know, drained, right? Drained. I mean, that's what I was after. I was after that direct, unfiltered emotion. And yes, you're absolutely right. After years of practice against that, mm. it was a huge yeah, challenge. Technique, right. right. But what about, I mean, actually, did you set yourself a task of doing an image a day or an image a week? Or no, 140. Like so, I mean, Just out of 365. Like so what is that? That's like the 52 weeks. That's a, a couple of images a week. That's okay. like three, four images a week. Sometimes I would do all, more than one at a time. I, you know, I would, uh, let me see, there's some of these that are like series. Well, I guess it must be quite hard for you, because I know, speaking personally, when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling really unhappy, I'm quite good at putting my feelings down, but when, I'm, when you're feeling kind of pretty okay, but you know, I mean, it's trying to actually discipline yourself to do it, and you don't feel like doing it, even though you know well, you've got I'm, something to say. Yeah, but I'm, you know, trained at that. Yeah, but even so, I bet at certain points, some of, some of these images are harder to extract from your, Psyche than others or not? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Sure. I mean, you know. And then not editing yourself afterwards must be difficult too. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Not hiding it. Yeah. At, you know, this has only been shown. This is only the third time it's been shown. The first time it was shown, one of the things that completely shocked oh, me nice. is that people spent, they, I never thought they'd do it, but they went along and they read every single one. And they just read and read and read and read. That surprised me. I thought people would just kind of look at them, you know, and get a kind of overall ups and downs of a year. But that's not what happened at all. Well, they're incredibly engaging, actually, too. And I think I like the way that they're, actually, I like them being shown in this rather intimate well, that's what Rachel was saying, too. But it's a kind yes. of immersive experience. Exactly. Rather than having them on a long wall where you kind of traverse back and forth, here you stand and you are the centre of the experience. Yeah. That's really, cause have they been shown? They, no, they were shown on both other occasions, weren't they shown just along a very long well, wall, at, right? At the Women's Museum, it was on a semicircle. So okay. Yeah, right. Right. But it was I like this. I think this is really... Cause 
in a way, it makes it very intimate. And Person, and right. Intimate. You're inside the feeling. And it makes it very intimate with the viewer. You are kind of centrally it, receiving well, the experience. Much part of the whole thing, mm. aren't you? I think yeah, no, I, I think it works too. Yeah, it really does. What about you, Zoe? Have you had any questions up till now? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 That's all right. Don't worry about it. It's yeah. fine. It's just fine. It's fun, actually. But I like the way you use bits of collage as well. It's interesting. Just when you felt like it. Just yes. So it like well, it. these are photos, some mm -hmm. of the photos with our cats. And also, I was starting, this was where I first began to start uh, drawing cats, studying cats, which I, and I did more of later. Because I realized I've lived with cats all my life. I didn't know that much about them. Mm. Although, like Especially it says yeah. here, basically she preferred her cats <laughs> to most people. <laughs> <laughs> this is Donald's and my first collaboration. Three weeks after we were married, 28 years ago, I went running. We were living in Santa Fe, and I got hit by a pickup truck. And um, Donald and I, some months later, um, recreated the accident and did this series together. Mm. And then uh, behind you, uh, you have the Tracy M. in Monument Valley, yeah, and read, uh, where she's reading from her autobiographical account. And I like also the connection with the desert, because Judy, you had your performances in the desert. Right. And it clearly, as a landscape, has a very, very strong draw uh, you know, for a range of artists, um, so there is the connection between the work down here and and upstairs. No, absolutely. I mean, they mm. from Georgia and Keith to Frida Kahlo. It's a good desert, yes, yes, right. Yeah. I mean, she was on a rather mm. exciting road trip from her castle mm. flat in mm. Peckham. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. I mean, but, it was the exotic of right. the desert as well. Yes, yes yeah. I but, agree with that 100%. But I think there's a, there's a huge difference between the women that, that Judy has portrayed upstairs who are strong kind of universal goddesses and Tracy there is a rather kind of cowed, rather small and she had figure. And boyfriend to take her out and drive her around. It never would have happened without a car. Well, yeah. doing it. She's absolutely. Grandma, grandma, grandma's chair. She's absolutely right. And, yeah. she's sitting was, in her, and she's sitting in her grandmother's chair. Yeah, you know, you know what I was thinking? She's that is, a support system. I was thinking that only could have been somebody who didn't live there. Yeah, yeah. No, she's that would have conceived of that. I mean, yeah. She's really young and really, I mean, full of hoods and all that, but you know, it's, it's still, it's really interesting. I think it's a nice, it's an interesting counterpoint. You think? Yeah. Sort of nice well, that was the idea to, yeah. to have some dialogue. Well, I quite like mixing it up a bit. Mm. I mean, it's very much kind of Judy's shell. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. there's these kind of. But it shows resonance with yeah. other I think women's it's really work. Good. Right. Really, really, two really strong women. I mean, both of them, you know. I'm loving this, the Eve. Eve at 70. Eve hose. Yes, Do Donald and I concocted this photograph. I love this, the what apple. Is this? That's my airbrush. And it's your airbrush. Okay. And this is my spray hose. You see the hose. But yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, my, that's a hose for the airbrush. <laughs> and, and we like the juxtaposition. Judy is coming towards us with a big smile. Tracy but Tracy Scarbering. Scarbering. <laughs> Scarbering with the Union Jack, yeah, I think this is very good, yeah, absolutely right. Oh, it's a fact that I love it in your garden. Is, is this in your garden? Yes, it is in our garden in New Mexico. The oh, light, yes. the light, the light. Oh my God, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah, we'll give, yes, God, let's, let's look at the light of it. Oh, it's so dark upset. All right, this oh, is this another is birth fabulous. project work called Burst Hair Tear. Oh, yes, I can relate to that. I'm giving birth to three. What? I said I can relate to that. Okay, to really. Children. Actually, Ooh. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, di I did interviews with a lot of women and a lot of the needleworkers. And it was, they used to say that I would have this uncanny ability to like select a work that was relevant to their experience. She was in like labor for 36 hours. Yeah, she did, had an agonizing yeah. labor. No, look at this embroidery. That's uncomfortably okay. good. Yes, look at this embroidery. I want to tell you, you know, she, she worked directly on my draw, over my drawing. And we, this, uh, this is a translation sample where we worked out how she was going to do the stitching, but in order to get these blends, she worked with nine needles at a time. Jeez. So for example, she would start with uh, three strands of dark red, then she'd pull it apart and she, in another needle she'd have two strands of dark red and one strand of red. Then she'd have two strands of red and, and, and she would Amazing. systematically. Because they, like, they are like the gradation of brush strokes. Right, though, aren't they? right. Yeah. 
That's right, and this is where how, how I use thread like a brush you stroke. Do feel Absolutely, like that. I mean, it, is, it, is, it feels you know simultaneously ripped apart and crushed. It's a very yes. Well, that's what I, I mean. In the birth project, I tried to represent all different aspects of the birth experience, from the painful to the joyful. Well, you know, but it's the, 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 and also it's the, also incredibly intense. I think that's the other thing. It, what, what you captured there is that total, total immersion. You are only, I mean, it's the most pure Buddhist moment ever because you are so in the now. You are right. nowhere else but in that now. But like orgasm, it's the same, you know. Yes, right. Rather more scary version. Yes, and painful <laughs> version, <laughs> yes, right. Uh, but yes. It is, that, it is really interesting. It is really interesting. That's a fantastic image. But I'm not even. Is there a picture of that in the catalogue? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Everything, yes. Everything, everything, everything in the catalogue. It's in the catalogue. Plus more. Yes. The catalog's great. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to Just it. great. Right. Yeah.